What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the podcast, the Harbor Podcast, that is. Uh, so uh, when we were filming the uh, Kong podcast, something happened. I may have uh, fucked it up a little bit. And uh, the first half of the podcast is just not there. It's gone, which sucks because Kong versus Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong is, you know, your boy's thing. But uh, we still have, you know. Second half of the podcast, 50 minutes of it. Um, it's pretty good. What we missed in the first half is us talking about like the monster verse, like what we like the most, which for me was Kong Skull Island, which is still the best of the bunch to me. You know, if it's the visual language, that mu- movie is really fun and awesome and cool and interesting. And most scenes are just interesting in that movie and not leaving you like, okay, when's the next? interaction with kong or whatever you know it's like fun and then my least favorite is gareth edwards 2014 godzilla i respect what he did with like trying to keep godzilla out of frame you know like ooh, 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 look at this crazy creature but we all know godzilla we've seen 30 fucking movies we we, we all know you've seen 30 movies most people (laughs) have uh i've seen probably i might have seen 10 over my life um but yeah, Gareth Edwards, I think we're both not huge fans of. We respect it. We have similar opinions on it. Um, I remember a few scenes from that movie, but overall, I had no desire to see it again. Um, King yeah. of the Monsters, I think we're both. It's fun. It has some fun scenes. I feel similarly about it as I do Gareth Edwards' Godzilla. I probably like it a bit better. There's a bit more monster carnage. Uh, I like it better. Uh, the, ki- the, the shit. What's her name? Vera, whatever. She, uh her character just takes a turn for the worse. Like every scene of hers is just like it, her character gets worse and worse and worse, and more insufferable. No. But um, the fucking action in that movie, the kaiju shit is shit. I've always wanted to see it was, like, even as a kid, like it's spectacular. Like the effects are fucking mind blowing. It's the way you imagine it as a kid. Yeah, exactly. Of, of just Godzilla and, and so, Ghidorah going at it in a me. thunderstorm. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit. You know, and so, um, so as we get into Godzilla versus Kong, the the human stuff is more manageable for sure. Uh, and then the kaiju stuff is, is awesome, uh, it's just a little less insane as King of the Monsters. That's why I think King of the Monsters should have been, you know, uh, after this one. But, uh, I've seen the movie now three times in the podcast, I've only seen it twice, I've seen it three times now. I enjoyed it the third time more than I did the first time, so that's interesting to me. Uh, that probably, is interesting. I've I'm, seen it once. Um, I might uh, not see it again. It's like now, now, uh, yeah, because the first time I watched it, I was like, didn't know Mecha Godzilla was in. I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, this is kind of like spoilers, taking me out of it. Yeah, spoilers. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was taking me out of it. I was like, man, I did. The fucking director said this and that, you know, all that. But, and it's like, now when I watch it, I'm like, okay, this is badass because someone, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was on the podcast or in one of my friends in real life, but they were saying like, there wasn't as much kaiju action in this as there was in King of Monsters, which is fucking bullshit. That's bullshit. We have Godzilla versus Kong in the ocean. Then we have Godzilla versus, then we have Kong versus that kaiju on in the uh, hollow earth. Yeah. Then we have Godzilla versus Kong fight then they have a round uh which is round two then they have round three then godzilla fights mecha godzilla then godzilla and 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 king kong team up to fight mecha godzilla like what the fuck are you talking about that's plenty of shit and hell and there's a scene with the hollow earth when the bats attacking that's kaiju light it's yeah so like it's there's there's mecha godzilla fucking up the skull crawler yeah Yeah. and then there's a now yeah, this is this is chock full of, of yeah kaiju for real. action. I watched it. Yeah, I took my brother the, this third time, and he yeah. like uh, and brother and sister. But you know, my brother's fourteen, so he's going fucking nuts. Yeah, because you know he doesn't know shit. Uh, but he's seen probably a dozen Godzilla movies with me. Um, so w- when Mecha Godzilla it, when it's doing like the reveal and he's like starting to light up, my brother was like no <laughs> so he's like what and i was like right. yeah that's right bro but you gotta remember that's kind of the target audience for exactly so like uh-huh. 
it was even more hype with my little brother. So yeah, it was it was cool. And me, who was used to the movie now, was like all in, you know. So like, um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting how like certain watches are like way better than other watches. But of course. Uh, but yeah, so is, like, what? For what it's worth, I will throw in uh, Skull Island is my favorite too. I didn't oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think it's a lot of people consider it the best. It's very visually inventive, and uh, the period. The fact that's kind of a period piece, kind of post Vietnam. Yeah, for real. No. Did we? Okay. So, yeah, basically, that's, you know, our thoughts. We're going to go into this podcast now. Also, I just want to say real quick uh, I don't know, actually. Never mind. I like, uh, I like Godzilla. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything else to say, Scott? For this fuck Godzilla, nah. fuck kaiju. That's a fucking fuck cinema. I have to cut this out now. <laughs> Keith has betrayed me. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uve Bowl for nah. the win. All right, here comes the podcast. Okay. I mean, even if he had both hands tied behind his back, I wouldn't step in the fucking ring with him. Yeah. <laughs> Logan Paul should take your advice. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I mean, I'd do it for fifty million dollars. <laughs> I, I am low gang, so I'm pulling for him. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Well, I guess let's start. Oh man, we're. I I want to go and go ahead and talk about the uh, the two different plots going on. We okay. got the uh, you know the Millie Bobby Brown plot, and then we got the deaf girl plot. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like uh, they're like, damn, Millie Bobby Brown's got star power. We got to include her again somehow. I feel like they kind of were like, well, she can go in this part with uh, what's the dude the the podcaster's name? Uh, Brian, Brian Henry. Henry. Which yeah. you should watch Atlanta. He's amazing in that show. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's I'm great in everything. Yeah. I, I love him. I love Brian Tyree Henry. Yeah, he's a great yeah. actor. He 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 kind of did a similar thing in this to like uh, what he did in the Child's Play reboot. Absolutely, he steals uh, that movie. Oh, he's great. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, both open up with like infomercials. So. <laughs> Let's uh, first of all, I want to say how twenty twenty is it to have one of your main characters be a conspiracy podcaster? Brace Feldon. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> um, Damn, they should have cast me as Brace Bell. Yeah, that would have ruled. <laughs> well, see, those three, too. I, I like Julian Dennison, too, the uh, New Zealander. He's a great little child actor. And, I mean, that was a fine mm. subplot. I mean, it's whatever. At least it wasn't bo- as boring as it could have been. Like, they're all likable actors enough. So I didn't have a huge problem with it. It just was definitely yeah. the slowest part of the movie for me. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, I, I although I do think Brian Tyree Henry's solo is probably like my favorite bit of the movie that it doesn't involve Big Monkey. <laughs> I'm a, I'm actually a big defender of uh, that stuff. I love that stuff. I, I, was I, like, yeah. I don't hate Billy Millie Bobby Brown in general. Like p- it, people hate on her, it's, it's weird to hate on like a teenage girl. But, like, <laughs> she felt like an honest teenage girl in this. Like I, re- yeah. I liked her portrayal a lot. It oh, felt I liked her different from King of the Monsters, but I liked her much better in this than in King of the Monsters. Yeah. Well, apparently, apparently she that. and Julian Dennison screen tested with Romeo and Juliet. So that's a, <laughs> that's a thing. That's a thing. I just don't know if she had actually that much to do in this movie. Like, yeah, really. I mean, really, she was overshadowed by Ryan Tyree Henry and Julian Dennison, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Tap water. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. <laughs> See, also, the humor in this one was actually kind of funny. Like, it wasn't as cringy as I thought it would be. Oh, yeah. No, dude, the, the humor in King of the Monsters is terrible to me. Yeah. That's mm. why. Yeah. God. I, I can agree with that. Um, um like I, uh, all the one liners. What? What's the that one guy? In King get of out, Monsters? Dad! Get out, Dad! No. He yeah. He has all the one liners that movie. And oh, I, like I the older guy, the older science guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know exactly what you're talking about. I have half a mind to make a cut of that movie where all those lines are cut out. Yeah, well, it's probably an hour Thomas Middleditch because he's a. <laughs> you know, he's been out as a sex fest. You have. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, oh, a, he's, he's, a, a, he's been me too. Fuck him. 
great. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> you have an excuse to do that. Fuck noobs. Yeah, I, 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 I was never a fan of his anyways. Yeah. yeah so, so we got Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, she's obsessed with the uh, the podcast that this guy does. The guy who works at uh, Apex. And he's like trying to get the inside scoop. There's an attack. It leads to one of the best attack. lines in the movie, too. Yeah, he does where, for sure. Where Kyle Chandler is like, uh, "You need to, you need to stop listening to those podcasts and get back in school." <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people could learn from that. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. You know, and if you're listening to this podcast when you should be in school, uh, shame on you. Yeah, shame on you. <laughs> and we, we hate you. <laughs> And you're a piece of shit. <laughs> get back in, get back in school, you fucking failure. Did this Apex company seem like it came out of nowhere? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was just like uh, we need a, we need. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna say this. This movie, whether it wants to be or not, is about cooperation between the East and the West against the billionaire oh, class. Yes, that's what this movie is about. <laughs> Kong is the yeah. West. They uh, Godzilla's the East. They come together in Hong Kong, a British and Chinese city. They fight. Then they realize to reconcile their differences and destroy the capitalist pigs <laughs> who are the true enemies. That's what the movie is. Extremely based, yeah. Uh, it's whether, amazing. whether they intended it or not, that is the subtext of this movie. It's Here's true. Uh, like there's the air, airtight. Man. Speaking of uh, speaking of capitalist pigs, I think uh, Demian Bakir was having a lot of fucking fun in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I wish he would have hammed up even more and just been yeah, like, yeah. literally <laughs> doing like shit like this. Yeah, dude, <laughs> awesome. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna even like. I mean, yeah, because he was great. I just like, man, turn that shit up to like 11. I would have loved. Yeah, that. God, yeah. <laughs> I, I would have been drinking hand and shit, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> and he gets one of those moments, the uh, it's like, you know, in a lot of these types of movies, the oh shit moment where you don't run away. You just see that you're about to get destroyed and you just let it happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. They didn't even like, they almost went out of their way to make him like one dimensional. But oh, you know, yeah, they almost, yeah, yeah, they, and his daughter was even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, I literally, uh, I literally felt like, hey, the, the director or whoever was like, hey, here's this bitchy, like, like LA Botox socialite, like nepotized billionaire <laughs> woman, you're gonna hate, and then she gets she's gonna get ate by a kaiju, yeah. and yeah, man, and she gets movie. fucking crushed. Yeah, so <laughs> like, she get blown up when they're in the hall. They forget. Yeah, Kong like yeah. looks in her little in her heave. <laughs> it's like yeah. an awesome close up of his eye, and he just crushes her in his hand. Yeah, and you can like, hear her scream and shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah, it's what was though, that? So like, it's okay. There, no, there's nothing. There's no, it's there. It, it's there. I almost, I almost have the theory. Like, I think one of the reasons I get like an Adam Wingard or a um a Gareth Edwards who were like indie darlings before these movies is because yeah. they want a competent filmmaker, but not somebody with enough clout who can argue against whatever. Dude, that's of, the whole studio system. That's Marvel. It is a studio yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But I mean, especially in this movie, which I yeah. think they did a good good job with it. But they're like, look, if James Cameron's makes this, he's gonna be a pain in the ass and a diva the entire <laughs> fucking time. Yeah. And wanting to put blue people on Skull Island. Like, so <laughs> if we just give it to an indie director and then throw a shitload of money at it, something's gonna happen. We James yeah. Cameron drowns the monkeys. The one thing I will say that I, I not even like a negative, I just like I was hoping to see more like unique designs when you got to the hollow earth like of the creatures i mean the the wing ones are pretty sick but other than that that's it's kind of it yeah it's kind of yeah it's like the, i was hoping for like some really unique you could go just they went balls to the wall with so much of the other shit in this they're movie save, they're saving it for sequels i, think, I mean on. honestly they might be but yeah, yeah. i just I was, feel that way about every single one of these monster verse movies like king of the monsters they have this sequence where there's supposed to be all these monsters like coming out of the hollow earth or something it's like they just have like a big yeti or something that's like kind of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right and there's like a there's like a mammoth there's like a mammoth that comes out wait yeah. man, you know what i just realized that's what they left off that last movie so did godzilla just destroy all, is that where we're at when we pick up actually this uh that mammoth kaiju was supposed to be like more involved in this movie but it, it oh was, okay because uh, there's like 13 of them or something like that that all are like walking around the earth yeah well you see uh in the opening credits you see like 
all the characters that have been killed off and shit. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, I mean, just let the Japanese design all the monsters. They, they, oh, just, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, on, I'm not even joking. Like, just let them do it. That I can, yeah. that I can, I can roll with. Can yeah. Do, do you think, do you think Godzilla King of the Monsters is kind of a socially irresponsible movie? Because yes. it kind of says, like, just wait for, like, powerful forces to solve climate change and don't like write your politicians or like do political <laughs> act like that they're kind of like godzilla solve climate change at the end of the movie and it's like that's kind of irresponsible like people need to organize politically so anyway and that's kind of how it is it's like are you scared of big tech daddy godzilla is gonna come in and save you if you uh scott if you want that type of movie go watch shin godzilla oh, oh yeah oh, i okay. have and, uh, I'm really hyped for Shin Ultraman, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm bummed Anna wasn't directing it, though. He's uh, not. No, he's just writing, though. Yeah, just get, dude, get Hideaki Anno to, like, do character designs for the next kaiju shit. Yes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the, we haven't really talked about the, uh, the first fight on the uh, carrier, or whatever it's called. Not much. Not much. Uh, Adrian, I will say it. You did yourself a favor not watching the trailer. Yeah, you know? I know. I, yeah, I know actually, you did. Here's the thing. Normally, I yeah, I avoid trailers, but I almost wish I had known that Mechagodzilla was going to be in this movie because I had the expectations of, okay, one of these characters is going to be killed because that's what the director said. He's like, oh, you know one's you know the whole tagline was one will fall i was like oh they're actually doubling down someone's gonna die in this movie and everyone's nice. like oh no they're gonna team up to take on a, a, another character i'm like no they're not and then it happened and so it was fucking with me in my mind not letting me enjoy it as much as i wanted to and then so when i once i knew that mecha godzilla was in the movie the second time i watched the movie i was able to loosen up and enjoy them teaming up to fight really? him. That was the spoiler that I was telling you about last week or whenever we did the last podcast. Is I'm pretty sure there's a shot of Mechagodzilla in the trailer for like a split there, second. There is. Yeah. There is. Um, I, what, what was funny is that I didn't even think about that at all, even though I'd heard some people talk about it. But when I went in and the second they introduced the Apex company, I went, oh, that's Mechagodzilla. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, why else are they going to have? They're like, huh, there's this company making all this technology and robots. Yeah, I, would, I wonder what. Why would Godzilla be after them specifically? It's like, oh, yeah, he knows what they're doing. They're yeah. He some, somehow just like can smell chrome. Um, <laughs> he, smells like, he smells like Ghidorah shit, you know? Yeah, probably. He smells the, the Ghidorah uh, lighting up the yeah. neurons. I want to talk about the, um, <laughs> the line where. Um, they're, they see Mechagodzilla and dudes like Robo Godzilla, and then Tapbar is like, no, Mechagodzilla, as if he's seen the other movies. Yeah, the I thought that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I what the that. fuck? That was the most like wink to the camera moment in the entire movie, and I was, I was, I was for it. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, yeah, dumbfounded by that. It, that was dumb. it, it was, was so dumb. It, I loved it. I couldn't help he's, but like he's, he's a big fan of Gundam. He knows Mecha. He's like, no, it's a Mecha. That's yeah. the genre of anime we're in right now. Yeah. Okay. I could. I live on an island. There's not a lot to do once I'm you've been Japan. to the beach. And Tapwater's character was basically me when I was 17. With his like, <laughs> I'm just used to torrenting movies or whatever he says. I'm like, damn. I did. I did like that was a nice little subversion of like genius yeah, hacker. I'm glad Jurassic that they doubled yeah, down. Kids. They doubled down on the stupid hacking trope shit. And they're like, "Fuck it, it's gonna be dumb." So we're gonna even make it. You know, we're gonna pour liquor on it, and it's gonna somehow shut down Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I couldn't <laughs> couldn't help but like be cool with that. Like, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you had a setup for it. You knew it was stupid. That's cool with me, dog. Yeah. That rocks. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was good. I know they had this stupid Chekhov's gun with his uh, dude's whiskey. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of nitpicking that you could do in this movie, but why would you? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, no. yeah it's made no. for. I have it's to say, made for like CinemaSins types of fucking hate. 
Yeah. Which is, uh, First of all, yeah, fuck Cinema Sins. Because yeah, you Sins. claim it is satire doesn't mean it's good. But um, you're ruining movie culture. Movie going gold. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, here's the no, thing. I, uh, <laughs> I I was telling them earlier. I being me, I was hoping this podcast would be me jerking off this movie for an hour and a half. But I had my my issues with the film turned out to be more complex than my issues for King of the Monsters because King of the Monsters was, it was like okay, this stuff not good. This stuff amazing. Boom. It's that simple to me. I can get through certain shits. I like Kyle Chandler. I like this and that. But like for me, like anything with Ghidorah, Godzilla, um, boom. This is like all the shit. This is how I imagined the fights as a kid, you know, before this level of technology was available. And now I'm seeing it in this like spectacle, beautiful like way. Um, but with Godzilla versus King Kong, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoy these movies, but like there, there's some tweaking that could have happened to make it just like that much better, more enjoyable to me. Um, and just, uh, yeah, like uh, I was talking about how Godzilla's one dimensional in this movie. No, he doesn't have to have like as complex as a, a character as King Kong in this movie, obviously, but he could have been, they could have made him more of a more prot- of protagonist uh, instead of just like, a, oh shit he killed eight people now he's the antagonist now he's like overly mean more than usual you know i'm I'm cool with an evil godzilla but like you at the you started the monster verse with him as a hero of earth against the mutos and then doubling down saying fuck it i'm back i'm gonna kill Ghidorah for you guys too like uh you know if you're gonna make him the villain you should do it in more than just one scene with like minimal casualties and uh, i will say i didn't like his send off his last shot was just him going to the water and then you get the whole little i don't know i feel like his send off should have been more than just like i'm going back to the water now that's a, he's yeah, a he's yeah. he's a cowboy man i don't know that's what he yeah. does he comes <laughs> in no cool he cool that, like, he's the lizard with no name yeah they should have like either like made out or like shook hands <laughs> i was saying the whole Hardcore movie is like, kiss, kiss, kiss. Dude, uh, give me that radioactive breath yeah, circumcised. <laughs> That's the real question, dude. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's, I mean, probably not. I want to. I, I first of all, I'm not first of all, but I want to talk for a second about Junkie XL. Um, he just, I just watched, you know, Snyder Cut. I thought he did a pretty good job in that. Film. But this movie, uh, it was fine with the score, but like the riff he does for Godzilla. It's so similar to the original theme. It's like, why didn't you just do that theme? Um, if you wanted to change it up, like the 2000s, you know, like Godzilla, uh, you know, against Mecha Godzilla theme, that theme's awesome. It has nothing to do with the normal theme. It's its own thing. But this was like so similar. It's like, you could have just, fuck it, done the original theme. I don't know. Uh, I feel like it was, it was competent but it could have been better. I like Bear McCreary's score and King of the Monsters far more than this score. What did you guys think? I can agree with that, actually. Uh, even though I do like the Junkie XL score here, but like I, I do prefer Bear McCreary's. It kind of got repetitive. There was that yeah. same motif, like a lot of the movie, I felt like. Like yeah. the same three notes go doing that, you know? I enjoyed the synth stuff under the Hong Kong fight. Like, I, I thought there were parts where it really hit. And the scoring for when they go into the Hollow Earth, I thought worked for sure. Specifically, um, I love the Hollow Earth synths and shit when we're yeah. following Kong. I like that. That feels like we could have used, like, a Phil Collins Tarzan thing when he was running around. <laughs> <all around. laughs> That's what the next movie should be. It should just be oh, the Phil Collins Tarzan with King Kong. Reverberated uh, it should be Collins versus Gabriel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with that. Holy shit. Um, Collins cucks get owned. Genesis of justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. This, this movie's more crowded than King of the Monsters. <laughs> yeah. More like the Brady Bunch. Cool. <laughs> the, um... I liked uh, I, I like the Scars Guard uh, uh, Death Girl subplot. Though. I, I, I enjoyed that. 
Yeah. Skarsgård's intro is cool because he's sort of like a, a nerd at the start, like this dejected yeah, scientist. And then he guy. like puts on the shades and he has to become the action hero. And he's like not very good at it. <laughs> and every time he has to ask, ask Rebecca Hall for something, she's clearly like unhappy about it. I, I, I like that back and forth. Yeah. Uh, well, Rebecca Hall, uh, I'm convinced that they, they realized that they killed off uh, their previous hot English scientist lady, yeah. uh, Sally Hawk. <laughs> uh, uh, Godzilla 2014 was where I first realized, huh, Sally Hawkins is really hot. Um, and but, her, her death in King of the Monsters is so quick. You, you, you're like, wait, did she di- did she die? What? Yeah. It could have it could have been Fresh. more like you know. but no, they're they're like, oh no, we, we got rid of the hot scientist lady too early. We yeah. got another hot English scientist lady. I love Rebecca Hall. Mm. I do love Rebecca Hall. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised I, I'm uh, a big uh, Christine fan. So I uh I have to say that I was glad that this movie wasn't from the military slash uh what's it called um uh, monarchs kind of like point of view definitely like the navy's yeah, there but they just get annihilated <laughs> yeah the navy's there to do their little thing shoot at the monsters a bit but it's right. not like here's what we have to do you know that watching king of the monsters every time i'm like man i hope the next one they don't have to focus on the army and thankfully they didn't <laughs> uh, well, I, I always thought uh even uh, even like even though you have all the army characters in Skull Island, like I always thought uh, John Goodman's like monarch character was really like kind of shoehorned in there in yeah. a way. Yeah. The well, it, it's it, it that plays, movie also looks insane, but it also plays yeah. better because it's like Vietnam War, like you know, yeah. army characters trying to survive and not just yeah. like sitting in a conference room trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lance Reddick was playing the Monarch director in this, so like that's yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> Apparently, I, <laughs> he really? Yeah. But that, how many scenes does he have? One or two? one? He has he one. one. one yeah. scene. I've heard two. I'm sorry, three seconds of scene. He has yeah. one scene. Yeah, he's yeah. in some uh, other shots, but he has one total line. three seconds in the scene. Also, high set. <laughs> yeah, I was like. <laughs> I was just like, oh, right. I saw him in the, you know, in the in the opening credits. I saw his name, and then that, and when I, and then that was. Oh, it. Lance Ritter from The Wire. Okay. Huh. That's what he's from. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so obviously they didn't have much for Kyle Chandler to do in this movie, which was like, I liked him a lot, so I was hoping he would, you know, have a little bit more to do more but, to do uh, yeah, yeah. i agree whatever although i do think his reunion at the end kind of it, it, it kind of worked for yeah, me it was, uh, it was enough yeah it, it worked if you'd seen the other movies i mean yeah, honestly in, in terms of like hitting that emotional beat i think that works honestly i got like the perfect amount of humans human like I, as much as i do like Kyle Chan, it was good you know just have him reunite with his daughter and it's, it's fine and then he yells at Z Zhang back yeah i thought that kyle Chandler's character when i re when i rewatched king of the monsters after godzilla versus kong it just it really hit me just how i didn't care for the human drama in king of the monsters to begin with but it really hit me on that rewatch just how desperately they were trying to say oh no this is going to be an important godzilla drama like it, like you're going to be invested in the in the divorce proceedings of a ge- of a genocidal maniac yeah. i'm then, telling you he's a divorce like, guy and he, he works <laughs> cal chandler's divorce guy i could just i could just see michael doherty however you say his name michael doherty saying to cal chandler kyle i promise you you are going to be the first actor nominated for a performance in a Godzilla movie. And it's just... <laughs> it's, so it's much funnier if you pretend his character in King of the Monsters is his character from Catch-22. <laughs> Who does he play in Catch-22? Who's, yeah, I was about oh, to ask. Little Cathcart. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, he's, he's really good in that role. <laughs> I haven't read that book in years. He's, I've uh, I've only seen the Mike Nichols movie. But, yeah, uh, I, I recommend the miniseries. It's very good. Um, 
miniseries is the way to go. Chris Abbott's great in it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's see. We talked One about the Earth a bit. I like that whole sequence. Now he get so Kong going into and finding like his home basically and like proof of his ancestor i like that it was cryptic enough without getting into like too much of the mythology right because you you could very easily think who built this shit yeah we didn't have time for that anyway and also oh, yeah, yeah, i yeah. did notice did you notice some of those rocks i don't know if it was like petrified ancestors godzilla i mean king kong was as big as like one finger on these yeah. like giant monkey rocks who like might have been petrified ancestors? Does King Kong just keep growing indefinitely? <laughs> we're until saying he that dies? He's growing. I really, dude, I really started thinking about like the ecological impacts of having these giant monsters because they have to have like trophic relationships in the ecosystem, eating other food. How does that work? How big is the Hollow Earth? Why am I thinking this much about a Godzilla versus a Kong movie? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Some Maybe we'll get uh, a movie where Kong is like so big that he has to like leave the earth. <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go to that like, home planet. image of, uh, God, of Kong being carried by the nets, by the helicopters. But oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. I, that was a nice the callback. Nets, but the nets are this time, and then where they have to take him off earth, they're being carried not by helicopters, but by, you know, rockets. <laughs> He's got <laughs> yeah. an astronaut helmet on. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Make it all fit on Ghidorah's planet, planet, and just uh, just fuck shit up. The great. I did wonder why didn't they? Why if they knew Godzilla was in the ocean looking for him, why didn't they just take him by helicopter in the first place? But because they got to fight, place. Scott. They got to fight. Yeah, they got to fight. What are you talking about? Because you know, <laughs> I guess fuel. You got to get them out. No, Scott. They got to fight. They got to fight. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they got to fight. <laughs> This is like that debate for like Lord of the Rings where it's like, uh, you know, well, why couldn't the Eagles have just taken them to Mount Doom except this one has more merit? It's like, why the fuck didn't they just take them on the helicopter? On the helicopter? Yeah, well, you know, fuel. Expensive. It's a, it's a nice... Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of fuel. To them carrying them <laughs> in the original versus Godzilla movie. Fuel for the five ships. No, that doesn't... No, that's... that's there was also a really unnecessary callback when they, uh, when they used a, like a defibrillator to get him back to life, like how electricity brings him back to life in the original. No, I like that. Yeah, I, I thought it was fun. And it the, was uh, a clever way of, you know. And then the original, you know, he shoves a tree down Godzilla's throat. And now it's an axe. Now it's an axe, you know. So there's a few things I didn't mind. I liked them, the callbacks. Um, I want to say that when it comes to the the fight in Hong Kong. I was talking to this to Scott and Dylan earlier, but um, I felt like the action was a little too tight on them during this fight in places. And that it was kind of, I liked how fresh it was with uh, its style, with its staging and stuff, but like too many shoulder shots to be such like a big, it was leading up to this fight so much. And then it was like, okay, this could have been staged a little bit differently. There needs more more wide shots, more establishing shots. With like, you know, the old movies, there's the helicopter shots that kind of, the, that mimic helicopter shots anyway, where you get a sense of placement and then you get the people running and you see how it, you know, affects the people around them. You only see people around them during this fight for a little bit. So the weight and scale isn't what it could be, I think. It I think it could have been tweaked a little bit better. Um, did you guys, you think it's fine or, or what? I thought it was hyperkinetic and uh, I don't know. I loved, I loved the way the perspective shifted. You get these like weird Kong POV shots every now and then. Yeah. I like um, that. I, I, I was, I was going to mention that. <laughs> I love I love those bits. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I, agree. I, I got so fucking hyped during those bits. <laughs> I thought the camera had like a nice, it had a definite energy to it that you would expect from like a handheld camera, but there was also a nice kind of effective weightlessness to it where that sort of captured like the artifice, yeah, like how artificial the battle was. And so it had that, um, like that kind of in-between spot where it was energetic as if it was realistic, but also it 
understood that it was like an artificial, like something in like Speed Racer or something like that. And I thought it did a good job of sort of putting you in there with the energy, but also acknowledging, like I said, the artificial, like how artificial the whole thing was. Yeah, it's like the filmmaking captures the cartooniness of the actual battle. Uh, I was really excited by it. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like it could have had more weight to it. I don't know. And like the, uh, the I like the neon, but like the neon was so much on like the skyscrapers that it made it feel even more cartoony. It was hard to like stay as invested as I possibly could have. It could have been like 2007 shaky cam, like born <laughs> ultimatum shit the whole time. <laughs> Doesn't have to like be God, like that. Godzilla stabs a pin into. Like, <laughs> I I feel like there could have been a balance of this new fresh style with like the old cinematography in in a way that would have made it more like grandiose. But that's just my wants and desires, you know. And this movie is the opposite of the kind of archetypal. Uh, thing I was expecting, which is kind of nice, you know. I, I'm cool yeah. with them going ape shit with like the sci fi shit, but like, um, it, it was still was fucking like badass. It. I still liked it, you know, obviously, but uh, I just have you know a few little tweaks here and there. Yeah, hey right, guys, I gotta head out, so I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, Take care, Warren. Bye, Warren. Bye. Um, we'll see. So it always comes back to ape shit. <laughs> so I mean, so Godzilla and him fight, and basically he knocks Godzilla. So Kong wins or whatever round two, but then uh, the next round immediately starts back up again. And Godzilla um, just, and daddies him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. daddies so, him. So I guess technically. Godzilla does win, you know, yeah. before Mecha Godzilla comes into play. But I, I feel like having the tagline one will fall was misleading for, for me because well, I was well, like, actually, they're gonna go all out, baby. Technically, of course, fell because he yeah, fell. King Kong gets killed basically. I mean, they have to, that was done. well, technically, he fell because he fell over. <laughs> Adrian, good point, like, good point. these movies don't stop, like, I don't. Why are you expecting anything Why? from these gross corporate exercises? <laughs> and also, the people who make the tagline, that's an entirely separate department. No, the, the fucking, fucking director department. said that one was definitely okay. going, you know. Dude, because yeah, he had fucking PR training one, that yeah. told him to say that. I, mean, I know, but... That's still definitely won. Le uh, to win. Yes, he won. The shareholders won. Here's <laughs> my thing, though. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> My thing is, I, I went in expecting there to be some sort of caveat, or like some sort of uh, fine print, if you will. Um, like there was a rumor going around that, or like theory at least, that the the way that they would incorporate Mechagodzilla, for instance, was that the Godzilla that Kong was fighting was actually going to be Mechagodzilla. Um, and so when that one died, it was like, oh, see, one will fall. Or what I expected was, I thought... Um, I thought Godzilla was going to die, but because they want to, they might want to keep doing Godzilla movies in the future. They're sort of franchise proofing it would be to have Manila come in, and Manila would then be like the new Godzilla or something like that. Yeah. So I mean, they kind of expected that fine print where it's like they want to keep this franchise going, but one will fall or whatever. Um, I think when I first when I first saw it, I was. When I first saw the movie, I was kind of, I kind of felt cheated. I was like, oh well, I guess technically Kong lost. But the way I th but I think they kind of make it work into, I mean, dare I say, an arc for Kong because he's kind of consistently helped throughout the movie. And by the end, he doesn't single-handedly beat Mecha Godzilla, but he's decides to become the bigger man and actually just help out Godzilla. I mean, he's the one who fucking destroys Mecha Godzilla, really, if you think about it. He's the one who really gets those blows in. Yeah. But not without uh not without Godzilla's help. Oh, no, no, saw... I, I agree with that. And, you know, there's also the arc of uh, this American monster. They used to have these wars with these Japanese monsters thousands of years ago, and then they reconciled their differences and overcame <laughs> the billionaire class, you know? So there's an arc there. Just like how, um, you know, Japan and, you know, we're economic partners with uh, the United States now. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, shit. I, uh, 11 p.m. here. Yeah, I was saying that, like, I um, 
was having my mind was like having me like resist some of like my enjoyment the first time because I didn't know Mechagodzilla was in it. And then I, cause people kept saying, you know, they're going to have to fight up to fight a bigger person or whatever. I'm like, no, they're not. That's stupid. And then they yeah, did. Yeah. But on the second rewatch, now that I knew Mechagodzilla was in it, I was like, bet, let's go, boy, this is going to be sick. And sure enough, I enjoyed that fight with Mechagodzilla way more. Although I will say Mechagodzilla looked a little too cartoony with its style um, compared to other Mechagodzilla designs, but it was fine. Um, I thought he was cool. And I'm glad that they incorporated um, Ghidorah's skull because there's a Godzilla movie where they use the bones of the original Godzilla to make Mechagodzilla. And he, of course, turns against the guys who are, you know, trying to use him. And it's kind of similar to that. Um, but I, I hope this, uh, this isn't the last we see of Ghidorah's skull in some way. Like maybe we'll get like a Mecha King Ghidorah or something or, yeah. or who knows. But um, we'll see. I agree. Yeah, what do we – can I Can I just start this part of the conversation? Yeah. What do we see for the future of the MonsterVerse? Dude, I really have no fucking idea. Well, let me say that uh, I feel like uh, scale-wise, I feel like this should have came out before King of the Monsters because King of the Monsters, the whole world is, like, turned to shit. Boston is completely destroyed. Like, everything's yeah. on fire. And this one, it's like um, – I guess we're past that all now, even though it's just been a few years. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I and I, I feel like I mean this movie is too, but King of the Monsters is like almost too pornographic with its violence. Like <laughs> it, shit gets so fucked up, it's not even enjoyable. Like and it's like I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, none of these insurance companies are gonna be able to cover this. They're all on <laughs> like none of like none of this is gonna well, work. Yeah, it's anymore. like if if this would have came out before, then we could have built up to like oh shit all the titans are attacking all of the world like right now like that's crazy scale i mean it doesn't really matter that much but like yeah what is next for the monsterverse i don't really know go to space hollow earth in space the same yeah thing. Hollow earth hollow moon. Moon. listen listen godzilla has to go to space to recruit people to fight and uh kong has to go to hollow earth and recruit people to fight and they all meet back up to fight somebody yeah, no, that needs to be the next movie. It's like a Final Wars style yeah. after like two solos for sure. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then then we get like a dark reveal and then we see like, who is it? Oh, it's fucking Jet Jaguar boy. Coming through. <laughs> Hell yeah. I would fucking, I'd have to go to the bathroom and jerk off and then come back. But uh, <laughs> man, how would they do yeah. Jet Jaguar in like a modern style? I'd say fuck it, just like, let him have his old like design. A specific rim looking ass. Yeah, or, full, you know. You'd yeah, just check. be like me with some like clown makeup, coarse paint. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you looked like a Pacific Rim level kind of character, but dude, fuck, that'd be sick. I want like the specific like Japanese like Ultraman looking with the eyes, that type of thing, where they all look kind of similar like that. I want that. I want yeah. the fucking. I want it to look like that still, even if it's updated. It's got to look like that. Yeah, watching the movie the second time, I was like almost like enthralled that they they doubled down on like the hacker, like we gotta shut this thing down, <laughs> pour <laughs> liquor on it. That's so funny. I, I, how do you not respect that? But like how does like pouring liquor on it shut it down? It's a fucking movie. <laughs> it's a movie. It's a fucking movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. I do remember when I was watching King of the Monsters, there's one bit that strikes me as particularly hilarious when like Charles Dance is arguing with Vera Farmega and Millie Bobby Brown and they have to like I don't know hack into some supercomputer to release Rodan and you just have this random army guy just sitting there just in the middle oh sir you know, we've, time, the time's going down oh, sir it's now or never we got to do this to release Rodan sir 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 and it's just I don't know I just thought it was funny how, it was, how you just have the guy oh just hack it into the mainframe <laughs> The, the the funniest part to me the unintentionally funniest part of king of the monsters for me is when uh what's her name what's the mom's name uh vera farmiga you uh, well, her character emma emma russell emma? okay well i guess vera vera farmiga her she's like yeah, telling them about that. like she's telling them of, like the master plan of letting titans run the world and shit she somehow has all this like stock footage of like the world in decay like running behind her like the whole time like she it's like she put together this whole powerpoint like 
on the fly or something. It's so funny. It's like, let's talk about pollution. Okay, we have this footage of pollution ready to go. That's so funny to me. Um, Unless Fedora was born. <laughs> um, I think that monologue is also really funny to me because, like, because everyone's just acting so like shocked and horrified at like as if this is all some big reveal and now like i get that she wouldn't necessarily say hey maybe we should we wouldn't necessarily pitch this to everyone at monarch but like she wouldn't let some of her environmentalist side like you know let out a little bit like no one would think oh god she's taking that idea that she already had too far like everyone is just completely blindsided by the fact that she's doing this and no one would think like oh she went too far with this that's what was that's what annoys me about that scene i don't know if anyone knows what i'm mm. talking about but yeah i see what you're saying though my, my main question is where the fuck is angiris dude like come on. Like, was he like, king of the monsters monster? no what? Hey, what's the one? Uh, it's like, it's like a human and Godzilla's DNA made into a monster. I know that's one of them. Biolante? Maybe is that what it's called? I think Biolante is like. No, I, I remember it was like a uh, fucking monster with like tentacles coming. Oh wait, out. wait, wait, yeah, yeah. The the yeah, that's Biolante. The daughter like dies and like or, or somebody died. I can't, man. I've only seen Biolante like like twice. Godzilla. I just know it's that. Yeah, I think right. Yeah, Balante's cool, and that's like a one-off character. But like, give us a, like a new one-off character. Like the. I mean, I'm I, serious. I, I would I love like to, to, we get to go to outer space. I uh, want to see aliens. Yeah, Godzilla should go to outer space. King yeah. Kong and Hollow Earth. That's what needs to happen. I, I, yeah. I, I really like give us like a remake of the Astro Monsters, but like make it more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid. I, I always loved like different versions of like the heroes being the villain as a kid. Like I love Bizarro. I also love like Venom. So I would love more than anything for Space Godzilla to show up in this series. Yeah, as long as it's not boring like the fucking movie. Oh, was I haven't seen it in years. I just Space saw... Godzilla is like one of the most like has the most potential to be a badass. And I think it is. And then every time I watch it, I'm like, this is boring as fuck. Destroy is like a better version of it, basically. Yeah, it really is. We need, we need Gamera in the next MonsterVerse. <laughs> I would love that. Hey, you know what? I like the way fucking Space Godzilla looks, though. I've never seen him before. Oh, yeah. He looks great. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's a cool villain. Yeah. yeah. That's, that would be dope. You know, you know the Gamera Heisei trilogy has Steven Seagal's daughter in it. Oh, is shit. That's probably a goddamn turtle. Uh, yes. Camera <laughs> is very neat. He is filled with turtle meat. <laughs> My favorite show. Yeah. <clears throat> is there anything y'all want to say about like the final big battle with like Godzilla or anything like that? Have we mentioned Godzilla shooting his atomic he... breath into the core to growl oh, at King Kong oh, yeah. and yeah. also give King Kong an exit out of the hollow earth? Because that's my favorite part of the movie. It's just <laughs> everything comes together cool. right there. Yo, I, if Godzilla, maybe he controls the p penetration, huh? But uh -huh. does that mean <laughs> if he like if he shoots off into the horizon, huh? Does it just like go indefinitely? If it can go to the center of the Earth, like if he shoots off in Sydney, does it just like fuck up Washington <laughs> D.C. If he like I, say, it, right? I didn't think about man. He that breath defied gravity and like. <laughs> And like I don't know, it was such a I don't know, it was just weird. But I fucked with it; it was cool. Yeah, but he like, fly uh, with it if he like uses a thrusher. Yeah, like, couldn't Argh. it is like how did his breath penetrate that deep? Wouldn't it like maybe like bounce back? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to think too hard about yeah, it. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. I do like the. Uh, I forgot about the sequence where they they they're going through the gravitational rift or whatever, and it looks like two thousand one Space Odyssey for a second. Yeah, and they're like yeah. screaming and shit. I was like, oh, yeah, because that's, that's this movie going. Hey, do you remember this? Do you remember you know what this other movie? Me of? Like now we do the same. No, 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 thing. no. You know what it reminded me of is when Mario and Luigi get pulled into the Mushroom Kingdom in the live action Super Mario Bros movie. Thank you, thank you. I was thinking <laughs> <laughs> about that with my buddy. <laughs> when I was watching it, which if uh, if viewers at home don't understand, in the '90s they made a live-action Super Mario Bros. movie that was full-on cyberpunk, awesome, and then the whole yeah. world rejected it. So uh, 
you might I somehow have never seen that movie as big of a Mario <laughs> fan as I am. Next time I see you in real life, Scott, when you're in the U.S., we're going to watch that movie. Okay. It's ghost directed it's awesome by uh, Roland Jaffe, of all people. What uh, did he do? I don't know that name. Uh, the guy who did like the Killing Fields and the oh, awesome and shit. <laughs> And the mission with Robert De Niro. Yeah, any more county score. If you have a uh, cinematic parallel to the Super Mario Bros. movie, you're doing something right, boys. <laughs> That's all I could say. True. Uh, I have on my wall um, Dennis Hopper's King Koopa. I have him with a live action <laughs> Devo gun figure. Um, Hell yeah. Hanging out. say <laughs> before we just to, about Godzilla, you know, drilling to the center of the earth. I'll just say that super quick that. When I watched it with my friends, I just kind of realized this is the ultimate, like, you know, six-year-olds with action figures type of imagination. You know, you I, yeah. imagine yes. we said that. And then he uses his breath to like blow a hole into the center of the earth and like calm down. <laughs> Bro, that's like, movies now. You have like, to like you all. You, you have to respect it for that, man. Yeah, exactly. That's why the, I love uh, it. Did you see David Ehrlich's review? Ah, oh, fuck uh, that. It's just like. One paragraph, right? Yeah, that guy sucks. Yeah. Remember his article about Godzilla 2014, the movie I love, by the way. He he called it like the first post human blockbuster. It's like, shut the fuck up. For for those of you at home who don't know who David Ehrlich is, he's uh, uh, an IndieWire reviewer who is the most popular, who's the most subscribed to Letterbox user, I believe. Oh, shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, unfortunately. Here's his one half star review. I can only get so pressed over a direct-to-video thing about a giant ape fighting a nuclear dinosaur, but good God, what happened to movies? <laughs> fucking hot take. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm so special. Hate. Dude, what, no. kind of, what kind of nerd reviews movies? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I have to say, like, I would, you know, maybe one day we, we can get a, a, a an American Godzilla movie where the human elements are, are spectacular. You know, who knows? Maybe someday. And you That's know what? The- Godzilla 98 is not that bad. I said it. All right. Well, yeah. forget what I, Scott I, said. I kind of agree. <laughs> I do no, love- we're not talking about uh, it's not good. It's not, not it's not the worst movie movies. ever made. It's a lot of fish. It's a. Uh, I, I, I kind of enjoy the Godzilla ninety eight is like a weird, like New York movie. It is New York. It's New York. Yeah, Simpsons characters. Cisco and Ebert, Harry Mayer, like. <laughs> What's so funny about that Cisco and Ebert like cameo is while they <laughs> still it. They still hated Godzilla and they called that petty. I'm pretty sure like every Roland Emmerich movie that, or like every movie that Roland Emmerich did after that, Ebert gave like four stars. Like, <laughs> like three and a half stars. He gave the Patriot four stars. He loved 2012. It's like, I hell? guess it worked, you know? <laughs> This is all taking away from the fact that Matthew Broderick has killed people in his car. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, have you seen that Stuart Lee bit about how he had to hide in a closet? Uh, because after he interviewed Matthew Broderick for uh, Inspector Gadget and he had to sit through like a bunch of interviews just in that closet. Stuart Lee had that bit? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> he, used to write, uh, he used to write about movies for like The Independent or something at some oh, point. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, we should get into final thoughts on this because yeah. I, I have stuff to do today. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Work tomorrow. So, uh, Scott, you can talk about like the final battle or whatever, but also final thoughts too. Bro, I don't know. It's fucking, it's fucking, 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 fucking <laughs> Zilla, bro. <laughs> monkey. Yeah. Okay. Dylan? I enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I'm not really invested at all in these movies. I just like to see big things fight. I'm definitely going to watch this again while I'm shit-faced one night. You know, I'll be like, I'll be drunk as shit in my house and be like, oh, I'm going to watch Big Monkey fight. Right It'll be great. That's my kind of movie. Sparks? Uh, he Monkey. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really dug this. Uh, I, I, I probably would have dug it even more if not for like 
you know some of the some of the cuts to it but like no i i dug this it was fun all right sam uh just i guess sort of going off what sparks said i i've kind of been thinking a lot about how uh like there probably is some actually like longer cut out there and i'm not saying that off the slider cut train i just mean based on the fact that lance reddick has three seconds and that isaac gonzalez has kind of expressed disdain for how much her character was cut down um and i wouldn't be surprised if there was a longer cut out there and i would be interested in seeing that but i do have to admit that i did appreciate how streamlined and focused and just kind of quick and hit the ground running this movie was um and it just really felt like kind of unified and not at all padded and just a lot of and just a lot of fun so while i respect like obviously that people are upset that there might be that their material was cut down i would like to see that i am can i do like the you know streamlined movie that we have it was just a lot of fun very imaginative over the top like in reference 2001 and professional wrestling all in one so <laughs> yeah so i mean that that's good i mean so yeah i enjoyed the movie that we got very much it was like the highest lowbrow that I could want. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. All right, Stephen. I thought it was great. Um, if there's a longer cut, yeah, I'd watch it. I don't think the movie needs it, though. Like, it's under two hours, and it's just, like, really as much kaiju action as you could put in this kind of movie. Um, it would be cool to get more Godzilla stuff, though. Like, if there's a scene of Godzilla fighting the mammoth or something, like, why not get that? But otherwise, <laughs> I think it's great. Um, I think the tone rocks um, and i hope we get more blockbusters that are kind of like this because this is up my alley it's really right. it's really just the word for it it's just it rocks yeah now i enjoyed it i have my little nitpicks and things that i could uh uh say you know to make it more in the style that i was hoping it would go in but you know i enjoyed it i had a fun time with the movies it was only an hour and 50 minutes god bless Thank God. Um, even though I think it, it sags in the middle just a little bit, I'm glad it isn't fucking so boring with the human characters. Like, yeah, they do some stupid shit, especially Millie Bobby Brown. But like, it's it's a, more interesting than the King of the Monsters human shits. And like, I like a lot of the imagery. And I like the Hollow Earth, and I like that they went balls to the wall with some of the sci-fi elements. And yeah, I would me obviously i'm a true auteur kino cowboy i would have staged the action at the end a little bit differently to make it more uh solid in my taste but uh you know it's fucking crazy and it was great to see on the big screen and i'm glad everyone's going to see this i'm glad it made 50 million in five days which is already almost more than tenant made in three months so yeah. it means people are coming back to the movies they're going to see our boys fight and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, a pretty decent success. I'd say that uh, the I, I still like Skull Island the best out of the MonsterVerse. That just hits my style more with its visual language. But uh, I think this is a pretty good success. And uh, maybe they'll um, one day have uh, truly spectacular human elements that blow you out of the water. And I think uh, maybe if they can't get it to where they want with the drama, they should take the Final Wars route and have everyone doing fucking crazy kung fu, neo fucking rip off of <laughs> like yeah. Matrix shit. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun, fun time. I'm glad I saw it a second time because the first time my stupid fucking brain was not letting me like certain things and then I got over it. And now I'm a... I'm pleased. So yeah. Oh. I hope uh hope we can all uh I hope some of you that haven't seen some of the, well, I guess Warren's really the one who needs to go back and watch more shit, but he's out of the podcast. Uh <laughs> I just want to recommend real quick uh my favorites are probably you know Godzilla versus Hidora. Go check that out if you're listening, you haven't you know watch many uh the original godzilla versus king kong is fun i prefer versus mothra and the original Ghidorah. and as for mecha godzilla movies i love mecha godzilla 2 which is actually the third mecha godzilla but i i love 
against Mecha Godzilla, I think even more, which might be underrated. I think people prefer Tokyo SOS, but against Mecha Godzilla hits hard for me. So those are my recommends. Anything else y'all want to say? I think it's beautiful that after uh, the critical failure of Death Note and um, Blair Witch, that Wingard has come back swinging and single-handedly revived cinema uh, with this film <laughs> being the biggest HBO Max movie in the first fucking blockbuster in theaters in over a year. Like, congrats to that king. And he says he's going back to doing indie shit. I hope he and Barrett make, uh, make their I Saw the Devil remake, and I hope uh, they get to do what they want. It's the fact that it's available to watch on hbo with no further you know you know no extra money needed other than your subscription and i, and I still saw so many people out in, at the theater this weekend to see it they know they know they got to see it on the big screen and that's awesome to me yeah and hope everyone if they want to get vaccinated get vaccinated hopefully more movies will come out this summer and uh yeah it's a fun time boys oh yeah all right so I guess that wraps up this episode of The Harbor. Thanks for listening. Shout out to Film Posting if you're watching, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, Anyone not- else uh, coming down with the uh, Oscar fever. <laughs> No. Um,